All right, folks, how's it going? This old disc is. I'm out in the shed. I'm not out in the woods today. Um, having a weekend off, um, coming off a night shift and all that sort of stuff. I was supposed to meet up with um, Mac Tightwad and a few other chaps today, but unfortunately, we've now gone into this level of tier four lockdown, so um, we can't meet up, can we? So, um, so with that, I've got some projects to be getting on within the shed. So. Um, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to be doing, is um, I'm actually going to be putting, you know, I've got this Bracelet knife, yeah, this is the one that I actually uh, rehandled and put that bit of ash on there. Um, and uh, you might have seen me using it with just the leather sheath that I used to just put around my neck. Okay, but what I've got is um, I recently um, ordered some birch bark. Um, got some nice thin birch bark, a nice roll there. So what I'm going to intend on doing is obviously sheafing up the knife with a nice um, skin of birch bark. So um, what I'll do is there might not be a lot of talking in this one, and it's not really a how-to as such. It really is just sort of like me going through the process of making up some sort of sheaf. So um, what I'm doing right now is because this knife hasn't got uh, sort of like a 90 degree spine on it um, as a scraper, what I'm doing is I'm just sticking it in the vise and running a Dremel over it and the file, just getting it enough. I'm not so much worried, too concerned about um, using it for ferro rods and stuff like that, even though I am, I am giving it a scrape because as probably most of you know, I'm more of a, I'm more of a user of using a scraper itself. Um, but what I am going to do, what I am more interested about is actually having that spine there to be able to scrape off um, layers of wood so it produces a dust so it obviously makes it a little bit easier for um, for obviously lighting with a, with a ferro rod later on in use. So what I'm doing right now is I'm making a little, um, what I have made so far is a little case um, for the knife to obviously sit in. Okay, like so, I'm literally just sort of thinning it down some um, and um, I'm kind of doing a bit of everything right now. I'm kind of multitasking. I'm kind of having a cup of tea. I'm kind of scraping off the bark off the uh, off this little sheath just to thin it down a little bit more. And then I'm also uh, using the vise to obviously uh, to obviously stay uh, to, to obviously make it into a 90 degree spine. Um, put a bit of an edge. Uh, put a bit of a back uh, back back bit back edge on it so I can use it as a scraper. All right. So uh, so I won't be a lot of talking. And then what I'll do is I'll just video bits and put the process together of me actually making one. All right. Stay tuned. Me 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 La di di, la di da, la di 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 di, chibi dubi dubi du, sha la la, sha la do, ba 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 da ba, du du du, da da da, da 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 da, du du du. Ah, 
Um, I was planning on sort of making this birch bark sleeve uh, or the sheath some time ago, but unfortunately I didn't have the length that I wanted. And this sort of um, some of this bark that I've got is actually really thick. It's kind of sort of four or five mil thick stuff, and I've had really had to give it some bit of a scrape down. But um, what I'll probably end up doing is just using this to make um, continue making some birch pots. I mean, there were some strips that I actually cut down. I mean, if you look at the thickness of them. These are the ones that I was going to use to obviously wrap. Well, you'll see it in the process, but I'm not going to use these now. I'm actually going to. I'm actually going to use the new roll that I got. Um, I actually got the. I actually got the link off of um, Paul Bibby um, on uh, uh, via Instagram. Um, he recently went out. He he was out. Um, up his, they run the I think the Bush, Wiltshire Bushcraft Club or something like that, and they're always having craft sessions and stuff. And um, Paul gave me a heads up that I actually got a got a mention in um, in uh, Sandy, who's a, who I believe is a knife maker. I don't really know him too well. Never met him. He's quite a sort of like quite a popular knife maker within sort of like some of the community, I suppose, with people. And um, I actually appear. Or I don't actually appear, but I get a mention in the video because Paul was inspired by watching one of my videos on making birch pots. So, um, you know, obviously truly grateful for that one. And so I contacted Paul because then I noticed that he'd made a he'd made a, a sheath out of birch bark. Apparently it's something that he does quite a lot and he uses some of the, I think the more or number one or number two knives. And then he gives them out to people as gifts. Um, but Paul, Paul gives me a mention. Uh, in that particular video and as I say what I want to do now is obviously make my own it's something that I've been wanting to make for ages but I just haven't had the decent birch bark material and I've finally got round I've had that birch bark for a cup for about a couple of weeks now and I'm actually going to get round to actually sort of making the sheath for it so uh, yeah so, um, so as I say the birch bark that I had previous it wasn't long enough and also it was too thick I mean yeah 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 you can scrape it down and all the rest of it but I think I'll just use that for something else so um what I'm going to do is obviously use this one. I've not even opened it to have a look. Uh, let's, uh, let's undo it and have a look. Have a look at the, uh, at the quality of it. So, uh, it's quite a lot. I'm not sure how long it is. Let's check the quality of it as well. Yeah, it's not bad. I cut the little sort of holes in it. But um, I'm sure I'll, hopefully I'll be able to get away with this length down here to be able to use it as a. Oh, it's been sewn, isn't it? Ah. I mean, obviously, when you buy birch bark, you 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 do you do sort of gamble it a little bit. But this has been actually attached together, so uh, hopefully it will. Um, well, hopefully it'll work. So what I'm going to have to do is obviously soak it, soak it in some hot water to make it more pliable. Um, well, probably what I will do first. Oh, what I will do is obviously soak it first, then give it a scrape. So I'll take all that loose stuff off the back, off the you know the sort of like the, the silver white part of the, the outer bark. I'll take that off, and that's obviously good, um, good you know, fire lighting materials anyway. But, um, to get the length, they've. Um, it's been sewn together. Which is a bit of a, you know, I was, you know. So, uh, and then to make, I mean, obviously to make your uh, your uh, your knife sheath, what you're aiming at doing. I mean, you could even practice with using a, a, a bit of paper or a cereal packet. But the idea is that you're supposed to obviously fold it in. You need kind of double the length of your of your knife sheath almost. So, for example, if I was gonna, I mean, obviously I'll probably take it up just past the handle there. So what I'll probably end up doing is, if we just use inches for now, um, I'll probably take it up to about four inches. So that needs to be sort of four, eight. Okay, just on one side, and then it obviously needs to be eight on the other. I think if that's right. No, it doesn't. I'm telling a lie. It's actually further because what you're supposed to do is obviously start your your birch bark there. Um, then it goes round like that, back inside, and then up there because obviously you're then going to run your your slants into it. So, uh, well, we'll see how it goes with this bit of birch. I'll come back to you. Well, I've just checked. 
and I've just measured one length, I've just measured this length and it looks like we might be in luck. So, because um, the last thing I want to do is start joining bits on and all the rest of it. So, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, take, I'll unstitch that, get that soaked in water. And, uh, Right, so what I'm going to do first of all, just as a little bit of a, just as a little bit of a, you know, sort of a pre-planning and preparation. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, just use this piece of paper. This was obviously a bit of am uh, packaging from Amazon. All right, so what I'm going to do is, um, what I'm going to do is fold that over. Okay. I want my knife sheath to go something like that, okay? Okay, so what I've done is I've obviously used the paper um, to sort of mark off a sort of template, if you like, of me, um, of, for my sheath. So what I've done was, obviously you have to fold that in. That would be your first kind of length, I suppose. Yeah, inside there. I only want it to go as far as there to catch the handle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the other one come up the other way and come up a little bit further so I can obviously attach a paracord, a bit of paracord or leather tonguing or whatever for it to go around my neck. Fit that over. Proper like that. I could probably put my hand, that's all right, that's all right, that's all right. That's not bad, as long as it catches the handle. I might even go up a little bit further, but we'll see. And then obviously this will need to, and that bit needs to then flip in to obviously reach that to go down the bottom. So can you see what happened there? So that's kind of my template. Yeah, so I'm obviously gonna, that's gonna go, obviously that's where your power cord will go. So if you can imagine it'll be around your, uh, you know, around your neck, that's where I'm gonna intend on wearing it. So uh, with it being around my neck, it'll be something like that. I'm almost tempted to take it up a little bit more, but I'll see how it goes, all right? And then, um, because obviously that's doubled back on itself, and then what happens now is the strips, well, might as well show you, I suppose. I wasn't going to do a lot of talking, was I? So there's the uh, sort of stencil prototype, as it were. Okay, used a bit of cardboard just to get sort of like all my measurements right and all that sort of stuff. So what I can do, so the idea is basically to slot it in there and then to wrap it round on the outside and then it goes on the inside what goes on the outside at the back then goes on the inside and then you basically just keep going all the way up until you run out when you run out your birch bark you literally just put another sleeve over the top pull it in tight and then carry on right the way to the end so that's the prototype now all right so i've kind of got my measurements there let's stick that back in doesn't come out obviously because of this the uh, the sheaf and the bark obviously when it bounds around it as well that'll make it quite tight so that's the prototype okay so i can now crack on with the uh with the real version good old amazon <laughs> so let's get it all stripped down then let's take all these bits out Here's the uh, one of the wraps, 
I mean, admittedly, you need obviously a lot more birch than you would if you were doing it onto like, uh, you know, onto your little carving knives and stuff like that. So uh, there's my two strips. Obviously, we've got the wooden sheath, the knife's in there as well. And then this is the piece that's obviously, uh, that's going to create sort of like the, uh, the bit that goes around the sheath itself. And then um, I've left that bit overhanging now. Um, I've got no intentions of putting it on a belt. I really am going to have it sort of around my neck. All right, so I've now got that to length. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this, fill it up with water, um, and then we can put our birch bark in there and make it more pliable. All right, I don't think I'm going to cut it down to length just yet. I think I really, really will just let it soak. I might just go to the length of it. Give it a little go, but um, unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to keep that bit sewed on now. Um, you know, unless you're lucky enough to find a birch tree that thick, you know, you're not gonna get it that length, are you? So, um, I'm just gonna to have to sort of make do, really. So, um, but looking at it, I sort of uh, run the cardboard out because obviously, that's my stencil. Gonna to need to be, you know, it goes well over that sewed seam. And then that much further up. So I can at least probably take it to that crease there. Probably a little bit low it. So let's actually cut it across there now. So at least then I know what length I'm working with. And then obviously then I can take my, once I've cut the, uh, the actual length of the sheath out, which what I've been using as my measurement was this sort of metal ruler to get the width. So I'm going to have enough play there then to obviously mark that out. Pencil. I'll tell you what, while I'm here, I might as well just cut it out my to size and then soak it. It'll be easy to put in the uh, in my little basin that I'm using to soak it in anyway. I'll come back to you folks in a minute. Certainly harder to work with when it's when it's dry, that's for sure. Okay. Let's see how that looks like now then. With the uh, there's me. Uh, I've lost my cardboard sheet. There it is. 
so that's where uh, that's where it's joined. Just one bit over. That like that. It goes like that. And that'll be like that. Okay. I think what I'll do is I'll actually have it on the outside. I think the outside looks a bit nicer, doesn't it? Looks a bit neater. So something like there. Alright. Okay. So we've got it like that. And that bit will fold in there like so. I probably might cut a bit off. We'll see how it goes. It's not too bad like that actually. So hopefully we can lose that in the wrap round. Or what I could do is even put a stitch on there myself if I wanted to. So uh, quite pleased with that. Not too bad on the length. I'm pretty chuffed with that actually. That's not that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'll just leave it the way it is. Just hopefully I can lose that later that bit. You know what? I think I might get away with not even wetting it. I think I might just leave it dry. Um, I think what I might do though is for the wraps. I think I might just um, cut the wraps down. I think what I'll do, I'll, unst I'll unstitch it. The thing is, this will be handy to make another sheaf. So um, what I might do is actually just which you just cut it to length and use it as is, I think. We'll go with that, I think. But obviously cut it a lot thinner. If you get a bit like that, just kind of bend it over. It's almost corky. And then just take that off. Just want to thin it down a little bit. because it's only body finger off. Okay. Just take that little 
Let's just bit off there. Right, now I did say that I was going to soak it, but um, I might be up. We'll see. We'll see if I can get away with not doing it. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do now, obviously because that seam's there, it's, it's going to pop out. I think I might stitch it actually. I might put a stitch in there because it is going to pop out. I'll, well, we'll experiment, shall we? So basically what I'm going to do now is just put that bark in there like so. Just onto the edge. I'm now going to wrap it around the seam. And that's now going to go on the inside. See, I've got all carried away there. I need to have that on the outside, don't I? Even that bit's got bloody hell looking to look horrible in it. Bloody horror. <laughs> right, let's start again, shall we? Maybe we'll be lucky the third time. All part of fun, isn't it? So stick that in there. Wrap it round. Okay. And that overlaps like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. well, part of them trials, trials and trials and tribulations, isn't it? I'm sure we all go through it. So let's try again. Maybe full time, lucky, eh? So we'll take it round there like so. No one's an expert, and I certainly ain't. Like that. Pass that between the two bits of birch there. Kind of pull it tight. I think I'm going to have to uh, come back to. I'm going to have to stitch it. My wife wants me. Almost got video bombed by the wife. So what I've done was um, I've actually put a stitch in it. Nothing special. Which is just to hold the seam together. Um, make it a little bit easier really let's try again shall we you know what folks this is something I've been wanting to do for such a long time then I finally get the birch bark and you know what it's a little bit harder than, uh, than I thought it was going to be actually a little bit more mucking around but all part of the uh, all part of the learning curve. I'll only be making one of these, I think, anyway. So that goes in there on the first bit. Let's put it down there. So that goes there. Fold it round. Side. And we've got enough now just to stick that in there. So what I'll do now is I'll get the next bit. It's a little bit when you a little bit like when you do um Cut it off and see what happens anyway. We'll see how it unfolds. Um, and it's a little bit like when you uh, when you're making cordage. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to take let's take the thinner end. That just goes back into there. Now 
wrap it round. Oh, look, it's going to go out of the joint here, isn't it? Oh, mate. Not working out too well, is it? So, let's take that bit out. Yeah, it's too short to work with. Okay, so I've cut another strip. Another alternative you can do when you get to those little sort of corky bits, you can use a uh, side because obviously that's over the top. I can slip in there. Okay. Because obviously that one's on the outside, this one can go on the inside again. So you're kind of just weaving in and out, in and out really. Okay, now it can go over the top, over the top, and look what's happened, I've run out. Unbelievable. don't think it's supposed to work for me, is it? So what I'll do is I'll take it back to there. Because obviously that's going to go over the top and make it a bit short, really. So what I'm going to have to do is obviously cut it off there. I'll get back to you with another length. And we're back. <laughs> right, so we've cut it off there. So I slip that one inside there. And now, because that's on the outside, that's going to go on the outside there. Outside. And now that's going to go on the inside. Hoping I've now got just a little bit of space just to fit that final one in there. So what I'll do is I'll actually just slide oh yeah, it. I'll just do it on camera. Just trim that bit off. Thin it down a bit more. folks I mean that did take a little bit that wasn't quite a bit of hard work I think I mean obviously it's yeah is it as good as I wanted it to be is anything ever as good as you want it to be I mean I could maybe just use that bit as well and just to tidy it up and slip it in there maybe I could take off those little the corky bits, thin that down a bit more. And then what we'll do, we'll just stick that one straight over the back there. Okay. And the wrap around. Okay. 
see what that's quite tight already but I would still like to get it in there just to make it really really That's it, it's gone. Brilliant. That's a bit better. I can cut that off there. And there it is. I mean, obviously it's not going to come out. It's got my knife in there, which I will be wearing. I am going to use this. I'm definitely going to use this. I'm going to put a bit of... Um, I don't know what I'm going to use, whether I've got a bit of leather thong in rather than a bit of paracord. I mean, as you can see, I've got a drawer there full of paracord, but whether I've got anything leather to use to make it a little bit more rustic. What I'm going to do as well is I'm just literally going to tidy up the ends, um, you know, just to make it look a little bit more presentable. But, you know, that's as rustic as it comes. I think I will have a go at making another one. I think simply because it's just a nice little learning curve. If I was to be brutally honest, I'd probably prefer to make the birch bark containers than I do making them. I mean, that this turned out to be a little bit harder than, maybe I was making it a little bit more difficult. I think a lot of it boils down to, um, you know, a little bit of technique. I did cut a few corners, I suppose, with not actually sort of soaking the uh, bark. Um, and also getting decent quality bark as well. I mean, unfortunately, here in the UK, we don't, we're not like, um, say, Canada or in, in Sweden or Finland or somewhere like that. You know, our bark, we have to buy it in. But, um, you know, I mean, this isn't a, tu a, tu a tutorial or anything like that. It literally was just taking you, you know, letting you sort of come along and, and uh, watch me make a uh, birch bark a knife sheaf made from birch bark. All right, so uh, thanks for watching, folks. Hmm. See you later. Stay safe.